Here, British engineers are racing to complete construction of a spectacular new home for Everton Football Club in the city's historic Docklands. This next generation 500 million pound stadium will seat over 52,000 fans. What's extraordinary about this stadium is how it's being built without damaging the protected Dockland it sits on. The first task was to create a solid base for the stadium in the existing Victorian dock, filled with water. The remarkable solution was to pump in nearly half a billion cubic meters of sand scooped from the Irish Sea. To speed up the process, engineers mixed the dry sand with water, forming a slurry that flowed easily into place. Once drained and compacted, the sand created a level surface for the stadium to sit on. The team then erected the stadium from giant modules, fabricated off-site, slotting them together like flat-pack furniture. This minimized the need for construction machines which could damage the historic dock with their weight. Gareth's team is on track and nearly ready for the new season to begin. This extraordinary vision is the Hotel Marquez de Riscal. It was designed by Frank Gehry, who also created the Guggenheim. Scaffolding and ladders risk damaging the titanium ribbons. A company has developed an ingenious engineering solution, a drone equipped with a high-pressure water jet. That's our main drone unit. It's the most powerful drone, which is able to be used legally in urban areas. The drone has to be as powerful as possible to compensate for the force of the water, which constantly pushes it away from the surface, creating unpredictable air turbulence. Sometimes we have some kind of shaking mass of air affecting the drone, so we need to be always ready for any kind of strange reaction that the drone has. It takes two days to restore the building to its pristine best. It's just an amazing view which doesn't fail to give a warm feeling around my heart every morning I come to work. This innovative technology promises to preserve architectural masterpieces like Hotel Marquez de Riscal for years to come. In the 18th century, Dutch engineers pioneered innovative machines to protect the country from disastrous flooding. They constructed dikes around the land, then built windmills on the banks to pump water from the fields into the waterways to keep the fields dry. These 19 windmills of the Kinderdike are the largest collection still standing. Mark Polderman and Robert Hoffman are water millers. It's their job to keep the windmills in tip-top shape. Remarkably, the Kinderdijk windmills are still used to control flood water, and they work with the power of wind alone, just as they did over 250 years ago. The sails of the windmill drive a system of gears and shafts that turn a water wheel. The wheel pushes water from the low-lying floodplain up to the level of the raised waterway, from where it eventually flows out to sea. You see the blades are turning, and the pump as well. This is very beautiful to see, especially with this kind of weather. There is water, there is sun, there is wind. Just perfect. Under their guardianship, the Kinderdijk windmills should continue to stand proud for another 300 years. Iceland's volcanic landscape is dotted with critical infrastructure, including the world-famous Blue Lagoon Tourist Resort and its neighboring geothermal power station. 
The power station generates electricity and hot water for 30,000 people. And the lagoon is one of Iceland's top tourist destinations. Engineers in monster machines are working around the clock here to build a unique superstructure. Colossal barriers, the height of office blocks. The barriers perform a crucial role protecting these vital economic cogs from the imminent threat of volcanic eruptions. Six volcanic systems lie across the peninsula. They became active in 2021, having lain dormant for the last 800 years. Engineers immediately began a colossal barrier building project to divert searing hot lava flows away from key locations. This is Europe's largest and most innovative surf park. This incredible high-tech pool took over two years to build. And it runs on a system called Endless Surf, which uses compressed air instead of paddles or plows to generate waves. The powerful wave generator can create a custom wave every 10 seconds replicating natural wave patterns and achieving heights of up to 2.2 meters. Solar energy powers almost all of the machinery. This wonder of pneumatic engineering creates waves so accurate to nature that Olympians use it to help them train in the heart of mainland Europe. The secret to the park's miracle waves lies hidden on the edge of the pool. 34 water-filled chambers fitted with high-powered air pumps. They blast pressurized air into curved channels and then release it to push and pull on a column of water which generates waves in the pool. Together, the pumps can shift up to 10,000 cubic meters of water every second. In the Middle Ages, Gdansk was part of a powerful league of merchant towns that tightly controlled the shipping across the Baltic. Today, a modern engineering marvel aims to supercharge shipping in Poland. This is the Baltic Hub Container Terminal in the port of Gdansk. It's the largest container port on the Baltic Sea. It covers an area the size of 120 football fields and it's about to get even bigger. Right next to the existing docks, a team of daring Polish engineers is raising a brand new 470 million euro terminal from the sea floor. The team uses specialized dredgers to remove around 7 million cubic meters of sand and soft sediment to form a deep water harbor. Then they form a box from hundreds of steel piles which they anchor to the seabed. Finally, they fill the box with sand and cover it with concrete. This creates a 36-hectare artificial island. When complete, this new terminal will be able to handle the largest cargo vessels in the world.